Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to share with you some classification metrics. To get uh, the PowerPoint slide used in today's video, you can just go to machinelearningeducation.com slash free. You can also visit me online at evidencen.com and you can read my data science blogs and tutorial at evidencen.com slash blog. So with that being said, let's go ahead and begin. Accuracy score. Accuracy is probably one of the most popular or like one of the most used metrics in classification problem. And basically what is accuracy measuring? Accuracy is measuring the proximity between the average predicted value and the true value. Basically, how close is the measured value to the true value? Higher accuracy is better. And accuracy should not be confused, confused with precision which shows how reproducible measurements are under the same conditions. And this is the formula for calculating accuracy. Okay, so y hat here means the predicted value and y i means the actual value. And you take the sum of that and then one divided by the number of sample. So this is the formula for calculating accuracy. Balanced accuracy score. Balanced accuracy score helps to prevent inflated estimate by imbalanced data sets. So normally you would use accuracy score, but if your data set is imbalanced, then you may want to use balanced accuracy score to prevent inflated estimates. And like I said, it's similar to the accuracy score previously discussed. If the data set is balanced, then you can just use accuracy. In binary situations, this is the formula for calculating the balanced accuracy score. In other cases, this is the formula for calculating the balanced accuracy score. Classification report. So classification report is kind of like a circuit long library that builds a report showing you the main classification metrics shown today. So basically, right, a classification report is a scikit-learn library, I've used it myself, and when you run it through your data set, it will give you um, the precision, the record, and the, F, the F1 score, and the support for each class in your data frame. And it also gives you the accuracy score. In a different video where I show you how to explain classification, models like random forest classifier i go over how to create a classification report and in a different video i also explain in detail what precision record f1 score is how to calculate it so go ahead and watch the video on precision record and f1 score and you can also watch the my video series on how to explain classification models and of course, the sample also includes macro averages and weighted averages. Cohen Kappa score. So this gives you a score between negative one and one. And scores above 0 0.8 means good relations. And scores at zero or below means low agreement between labels. So it is um, basically the same thing as predicted value versus true value measurement but it's mostly used to evaluate different categories in a data set. A confusion matrix. So a confusion matrix is like a table-like layer that allows the visualization of the model's performance. It shows what the true values are versus what the model predicted. So this is a confusion matrix for a binary class. And here it shows you the actual values. And here it shows you the predicted values. And rows in this situation is predicted values while the columns are the true values. And this table can be used to calculate true positive, true negative, false positive, and false negative. And then this matrix right here, true positive, false positive, true negative, false negative, can be used to calculate precision recall and subsequently F1 score. And F1 score is calculated from precision and recall. So like I said, go ahead and watch the video on precision and recall and F1 score. 
So you can get these values from a confusion matrix. And this right here is basically showing the predicted values. In this situation, this is a little bit flipped. The true values are here and the predicted values are here. So what does that mean? So for Setosa, like so the model predicted it to be 13 and the actual number that was actually Setosa was actually 13, okay? And in this situation, for example, the model predicted it, predicted it to be Virginica, six samples, the model predicted it to be Virginica, but the sample is actually Versicola. You know, so that's how to interpret a confusion matrix and I have a video dedicated to confusion matrix. Then we have Hamming loss. Hamming loss is the Hamming distance between the predicted values and the true values. And Hamming distance is the minimum distance between two binary strings. Just so that you know, it penalizes individual labels on like zero one loss function that penalizes predicted data sets. And this is a formula for calculating the Hamming loss. Hinge loss. Hinge loss is typically used in support vector machines for maximum margin classification. It calculates the average distance between the model and the data using the hinge loss. It uses only the error from the predicted values for hinge loss calculation. It can be used in both binary and multi-label classifications. And if you are really interested, this right here is the formula. So this is the formula for binary classification. And this is the formula for multi-label classification. Jacquard score. Jacquard index, which is like the intersection over union. And the Jacquard similarity coefficient is used to measure the similarity and diversity of sample sets. So basically, we are in data set A and B intersect, divided by the union of A and B. That's what this formula is showing us right here. Okay, so the Jacquard index is used to measure similarity and the diversity of a sample. We are um, this data set and this data set intersect divided by where this data set and this data set um, have a union. The Jacquard distance measured the, this similarity between sample sets. And basically, you get the Jacquard distance by doing the Jacquard coefficient minus 1. And Jacquard score just calculates the average Jacquard index or the similarity coefficient between data sets. So Jacquard index measures the similarity between two data sets, similarity and diversity between two data sets. And the Jacquard score is just the average Jacquard index between data sets. Log loss, also known as logistic regression loss. This is also called cross entropy loss. It calculates the log logarithmic loss of a model when provided with true values and the probability matrix of the model. The probability matrix is provided by the probability estimates from the model instead of the discrete predictions of the model. In a different video, I go over how to build a logistic regression model. And in a different video, I go over linear versus logistic regression. If you know anything about logistic regression, you know that the predictions from a logistic regression is discrete values because it's a classification problem. So the log loss itself is described as a negative log likelihood. That's negative logarithmic log likelihood of a logistic model that returns predicted probabilities for each training data. And it's represented by, by this formula right here. And I'm showing you the formula, but in real life, you're not going to implement the formula manually. You're just going to use something like a scikit learn library to implement this classification matrix. Now we are looking at Matthew's correlation coefficient. It's used in both binary and multi-class, multi-label classification problems. In the case of multi-label classification problem, it might be considered a confusion matrix. And we've already gone through a confusion matrix. And the value for it ranges from negative one to positive one. Positive one is equal to perfect prediction, zero equal to average random prediction, and negative one equal to inverse prediction. 
It measures the quality of the model's class classification by taking into account true positives, true negative, false positive, and false negatives. Basically, it's a correlation coefficient between observed and predicted values. And this is the Matthews correlation coefficient for a binary class. And this is how it's, this is the mathematical equation for a multi-level classification. Now we have multi-level confusion matrix. It's something as a regular confusion matrix, but rather the function computes class-wise, which is in a sample-wise multi-level confusion matrix to evaluate the accuracy of a, conf of a classification model instead of a binary model. So basically, this is um, something I showed you earlier. Confusion matrix can be used for binary or for multi-level classification. And now this is precision recall and F1 score. So basically, precision is the ability of the model to label positive values positive and negative values negative. And um, recall is the ability of the model to find all the positive samples. And F1 score is kind of like the mean of the of the precision and recall. Precision alone and recall alone is not sufficient to determine a model's performance. So we use an F1 score to give us a better indication of the model's performance. And again, in a different video, I go into more detail about precision record and F1 score and help you understand it a little bit more. So precision recall and F1 score continued here. So we have something called precision recall curve and it's used in binary classifications to compute precision recall pairs for different probability thresholds. And average precision score is the average precision from predicted scores. Higher scores is better. The lower end of the score is zero and the maximum possible score is one. And then for F beta, beta right here is the weighted harmonic mean of precision and recall. It is similar to the F1 score but gets a beta parameter. And this beta parameter determines the weight of recall in the combined score. So if the beta is less than one, then we give more weights to precision. If the beta is greater than one, we give more weights to recall. And if the beta is equal to one, we um, give equal weights to precision and recall. Scikit Learn has another classification metric called precision recall F1 score support. It basically gives the exact same information as the classification report that I showed you earlier, but not in a text slash table format. ROC AUC score. So ROC stands for Receiver Operating Characteristics Curve. And this right here is the ROC's curve, and it shows the performance of a binary classification model by plotting the fraction of true positives rates versus the false positive rate at different thresholds. And the true positive is sometimes called the sensitivity, and the true negative is sometimes called the specificity. <laughs> and AUC stands for area under the curve. So ROC AUC stands for receiver operating characteristics area under the curve. And this is a score that measures the area under the ROC curve. Right here, so the blue line um, is the area under the curve. And this summarizes information about the curve with a single number. AUC is usually a value between 0 and 1, and higher number is better. And this summary number, ROC AUC is usually used as a summary number to compare different models. So in summary, ROC AUC score measures the probability that a classification model will rank a random positive instance higher than a random negative instance from the data set. For multi-class classification, there are two methods that are used for ROC AUC. The first method is one versus one algorithm, which computes the average AUC for all possible pairwise combinations of the different classes. The second method that is used is one versus rest algorithm which computes the AUC of each class against the rest of the classes. And here's a graph kind of 
um, showing you a little bit. As you can see here, we have multiple um, ROC curves for different classes. NDCG and DCG score. NDCG stands for normalized discounted cumulative gain and DCG stands for discounted cumulative gain. They are both metrics used in ranking quality that compares predicted order to grand truth orders. It is most times used to rank documents like those found on Google search engines. It measures the usefulness, which is the gain of the document based on its position on the page. The lower the document is on the list, the lower the, the gain it will have. And this is the mathematical formula for it. And basically, NDCG is just the normalized version of NDCG. I hope that was obvious. Zero one loss is used the, to calculate the sum or average classification loss. And it assigns zero to loss for correct classification and it assigns one for an incorrect classification. So for example, if you have a list of 10 items and you get um, one assigned three times, that means you got zero assigned seven times. So your classification accuracy will be 70%. Now we are talking about the Breer score loss. This score gives us the mean square difference between actual results and predicted probabilities of potential outcome. So the actual result is either 1 or 0, but the probability is any number between 0 and 1. The Breer score itself is a value between 0 and 1, and lower score is equal to smaller mean square difference, which, is a, which leads to a more accurate prediction. So you want a lower Breyer score. And this is the formula for it. That's it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you made it this far in this video but you didn't like it, please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel. To get the PowerPoint slides used in today's video, you can just go to machinelearningeducation.com and once you are here, you can click on free data science resources and you'll be able to get access to this page, machinelearningeducation.com slash free. This is where I put my data science tutorial notebooks, where I put my PowerPoint slides, and any resource I use in my YouTube videos and blogs will be found right here. And also, you can visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have my data science blogs. And as time goes by, I add more and more stuff to my data science blog. And if you are here at evidencen.com, you can also click on free data science resources and you'll be able to get access to this page, machinelearningeducation.com free. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.